For people who want to know what is the key fangy network, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a word of disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you ought to be. Prove to them and stem out something. So that being said, 27 minutes of your time, PG, PG-13, say anything you want, talk about anything you want. You can say, you know, if you something about your fat neck, I know it's a work in progress. But the first thing I want to ask you is tell our audience a little bit about yourself and how you started your own company. Um, so, first of all, we are still very, very brand new. Um, we've only had our company license for like a year. Um, let's see, my husband and I both went to school together for film. And so we went in knowing that we were going to want to come out and start our own company. And which is why he went more camera side and I am more editing. And so that way we have both departments kind of covered. And um, yeah, so that's, I mean, just making friends and volunteering for projects. We've met people and been brought on more and more jobs and yeah. No, absolutely. You know, the other thing is, you know, it's fun because, no one ever taught me about my um, kind of work. I just pretty much said, I'm going to learn it all by myself, even if it's at a slower pace. But hey, eight and a half years, not going to work. But if you're interested, I would love to definitely cross promote and we can probably come up with some great ideas. Absolutely. <laughs> that would be great. So the first thing I want to ask you is, what was that moment in your life when you decided to create your own company, I know you guys went to school together, but what was the exact moment says, you know what, let's put our heads together and actually create something. Well, my husband is actually a hundred percent disabled veteran. And so we were trying to figure out something that he could do that I could possibly do with him. And he really wanted to do something that would get him outside and in the woods because he's a big avid hunter and fisherman. And um, so it started out with, I had told him that he should go do the film program at my school. I was actually in pharmacy at the time. And that way he could get into kind of the documentary side of things. And after the first quarter, he came home bringing projects home and I saw what he was doing. And I was like, I want to do that that looks way more fun than what I'm doing. And that's kind of when we came up to with the plan of me switching into film also and kind of combining forces. And the name of your company is Silent Uh, Pictures, right? Sight Picture Productions. Sight. (laughs) Sorry. Mm -hmm. I was going to say about this thing popped on my phone. So Sight Picture Productions. It's actually a really cool name. Thank you. So did you describe um, how you wanted your background or did you create your own background? I'm, what do you mean by that? Oh, the background is the dear picture you have. Oh. On your- <laughs> so actually, um, my husband came up with that. The first feature film we worked on was Runaway. It's still in festivals right now, actually. Um, and we needed to put it at the beginning of that film. And so I was actually working editing that and my husband was tired of waiting for me. And so he's like, screw it, I'm going to do it. And so he actually came up with that. You know, it's funny you should mention Runaway because I think there's actually a movie, a horror movie that was the same name. I know a lot of movies, hey, can't be uh, original. So why not take something (laughs) that works, right? Now just copy and paste it. But I think there was a movie, a horror movie, called Runaway. I think my sister saw it. I don't remember if she liked it or not, but she likes the whole horror thing. But, hey, you know what? It's hard to be a lit to know, but what you can do is put your own spin on it and make it very original. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of – there's actually quite a few movies out there called <laughs> Runaway. Um but actually, that's one of the first things that we learned in school, too, was that 
no matter how original of an idea you think you have, it's been done before. <laughs> it really is. You know, I actually talked to my dad about a lot of people say I should write a book, but long story short, I'm going to wait till I reach a thousand episodes, then write yeah. a book instead of doing it. You know, 800 and people are like, oh, you know, you could have waited to a thousand and it would have been <laughs> more special. I'm not fine, whatever. But then when we're talking about titles of books and different names, and it's like, it, oh, that name is fine, but it's been done before. Mm -hmm. Which way I did write a book, it was god awful. Um, <laughs> it was called When You Overcome Controversy, Dreams Do Come True. Even if you have a learning disability, and I've made jokes about it. Said, first off, you can't overcome controversy. And second of all, the title was just, I spell title wrong. So now I know it's T I T L E. At the time, and exuberance didn't fix it, they put title. So I said the title of the story. And if the book was meant to be a joke, it would have been a perfect thing, you know. Um, my mom went to community college. Instead of saying my mom went to community college, it said your mom went to comedy college. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I even said to Exubers, can you look at the book? Can you make sure it's readable? Can you make sure it's edible? Yep. I looked at it like typo here, typo there. What the hell is it? And here's my other sarcastic favorite. Um, I was born, um, well, I was conceived on Long Island. Okay. And, and of course, you know, obviously, typo. And it says, I rise from Long Island. So if you want to make a <laughs> comedy, you could, I give you the book, make a comedy out of it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for me, I'm not a storyteller. So I would actually work with someone and be like, yeah, here's what I do. Just make a story out of it. For If you leave it to me, it's kind of like, you know, a dog chasing a car because it's not going to end well. Yeah. But the other thing that caught my interest, I'm looking at your Facebook, is you mentioned you are award-winning editor. Yes, I am. And that uh, is for a runway. <laughs> no, absolutely. No, but I didn't mean to interrupt. But I was going to say before that, I want to say thank you for, to your husband. Thank you for his service. Oh, thank you. He actually just walked in. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's welcome to join us. You, you want to say hi? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't like being in front of the camera. He's understandable. Like, I've been trying to get more army people on the show. Hey, yeah, you doing? Yes, thank you for your service. <laughs> oh, thank you for your support. Appreciate that. Thank you. Were you in the um, army or the Marines? Yeah, I was the army. Hey, if you're interested, I would love to hear some war stories. Oh, if, you're, <laughs> if you're about to talk about that, I know. I want to have certain people from the army on and they're like, Oh, I mean, I had some people from the air force, one uh, retired Marine. It's like, Oh, can you tell me about this? Like, Nope, can't do that. <laughs> yeah. So I know it's certain things that you can and cannot talk about. Uh, there's not, nothing too much crazy that went on. I went to Iraq in, uh, Oh, nine, 10. And, uh, been a couple other places here and there around the country. And yeah, I had a pretty relaxed, you know, time when I was in my service. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Did, did you ever get any uh, medals? Um, I mean, yeah, I got quite a few. <laughs> <you know. laughs> no, that's really cool. My grandfather actually served in World War II, and I found out recently his father served in World War I. Oh, wow. Very that's, cool. That's crazy. So the question I want to ask you now is a double interview is, <laughs> was your father – in the army or what inspired you to join the army? So my stepfather, he was a uh, prior service also in the army. I think the only what expired me was I was working on kid number three and I needed a better job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I uh, told him I was yeah. pregnant again. And two days later he came home and said, I'm joining the military. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much how that went. <laughs> you know, it's like the joke in the Simpsons where Marge tells Homer she's pregnant and he starts ripping hair out of his head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, you, if you don't mind me, Frax, and how did you guys actually meet? You know, your wife was just saying you went to school together, but. Um, so that's actually a funny story. We met when we were 18 um, at a party. He walked in and stole a beer from me. <laughs> 
And I yelled at him. (laughs) And uh, we became friends after that. And about two months after that, no, not even two months. It was like a month because that was right around Christmas. So two weeks after that, we started dating and been together ever since. Yeah, it's meant to be. It's meant to be. I always seen people that uh, are like, oh, I married my high school sweetheart. You know, Trish Stratus, beautiful woman. She married her high school sweetheart. Um, there's something, somebody else who's famous who married a high school sweetheart. And I'm like, why didn't that ever happen to me? Besides <laughs> the fact I have a disability. <laughs> but I never actually had a high school sweetheart. But I, I knew people who were pregnant in their senior year, not anything to brag about. Yeah. I, uh, anyway. well, <laughs> oh, go our ahead. oldest actually is my stepdaughter. Ben had her in high school with his high school girlfriend. Yep. So <laughs> <laughs> we right. were in family when we met. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, things were go for a reason. Mm-hmm. So the next question I want to ask you guys, besides me, obviously, have you worked with people with disabilities? And are you, sounds like an oxymoron, but I always ask anyway. Have you worked with people with disabilities? And are you willing to work with people with disabilities? Besides me. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've, if I have. Um, I mean, not that I would ask or, you know, it was obvious, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I definitely wouldn't, you know, care either way. Mm-mm. You know, I don't think it would make a difference either way. Yeah. No, and aside. I mean, from, skill is skill, right? Aside from oh. you and <laughs> your yeah. your back issues, that's. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think I've worked with anybody with disabilities no. really. It's true, but actually, going back, you mentioned you were in the army. So, have you ever experienced post traumatic stress disorder or PSD? I have, yeah, yeah. It's so, definitely not. It's definitely not a fun fun thing you know for our listeners how did you um cope with that of course you have a beautiful wife you know that helps yeah. but i've seen you know a lot of shit and can actually get to you yeah i don't want to impose on you but i am very curious now, i think what helped me uh when i first got out of the military um it was really tough and i kind of like didn't i was depressed and i kind of lost hope and purpose you know and then uh I, I found the outdoors again, so I became more outdoorsy, and uh, just talking and being with other veterans, I think, helped the most. I tried regular, like, therapy and all that kind of stuff, and it just wasn't, they never wanted to talk about it, so, because th- they themselves didn't experience what we went through, um, but uh, the other guys did, you know what I mean? So it was easier to open up with those guys, and that's just some random stranger. There was you know, a few organizations, too, that we attended that really helped a lot and we ended up volunteering for for quite a while still volunteer for one of them yeah um yeah, if i can give a quick shout out to uh the wounded veteran uh <laughs> waterfall club mm-hmm. they helped me out a lot yeah An amazing organization take uh veterans veterans and their families out on guided hunts it's they're awesome. actually who gave ben his very first job as a cameraman too yep. Yeah, it's really cool. I thought you were going to say wounded warriors, but there's a lot of conspiracy about that, you know, that they're actually yeah. a front. Yeah, yeah. I've heard a lot of bad things about that group. Uh, I, I've had some good experience with those guys. They got mm-hmm. me on a like a horse riding thing. That was really fun. Rainier Therapeutic Riding. That was the first program we did that helped a lot. Our whole family did that one. Oh, nice. You know, I, personally, I think people that talk <laughs> shit about you, and it says PG, PG-13. Anyone that talks badly about you, they're just jealous. Oh, yeah. No, I feel you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you ever think, not to talk about politics or anything, but what's the whole pandemic? Has mm-hmm. this given you guys an opportunity to sit back and refocus on what's really important? Because people always say, you know, it would be nice to stay home and do absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, now you have that, and now you're complaining and saying, I want to go back to work, and this is kind of like, you can't have it both ways. No, that's very true. I mean, it sucks being stuck at home, right? Nobody wants to be stuck at home. But yeah, I was I was that same way. I said the same stuff, like, man, if I could just be, I don't know, rich and not have to work and just sit at home all day, well, that's got to suck, because we all experienced that, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't fun. 
Um, luckily, we, uh, a lot of me and my friends, we got to hang out using the Xbox. We played some video games, so that was our hangout guy time, mm-hmm. right? But And we did yeah. have a few productions throughout the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Um, that was an interesting experience. <laughs> yeah, that was tough. That was a tough mm-hmm. one. With all the guidelines and stuff. Yeah. Well, Const- speak it. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say with all the guidelines constantly changing, it, it was rough. <laughs> Well, how do you feel about now? Like one thing I do want to promote for our listeners, make sure to go out and get vaccinated. And I'm like, why be like, why, why would you say something like that? <laughs> Are you trying to not get listeners? You know, it's kind of like, okay, well, let me ask you your honest opinion. Do you think it came from a lab, number one? And do you think eventually this crap will, will go away? Well, I mean, I, I don't believe that COVID is fake. COVID yes. nineteen is a is a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, do I think it'll go away? I think it's it's been around for a lot longer than we've been talking about it for, and it's going to be like the next flu. Um, that's kind of, I guess, my take on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the conversations we've kind of had about it. Is you know, with the flu vaccine they kind of are playing a guessing game of which versions are going to be the most deadly that year. And, you know, and that's kind of what's happening. I feel like with COVID because it keeps mutating, it's going to be just like the flu where they're going to be like, okay, we think these are going to be the worst. You know what I mean? saying? Does that make sense? <laughs> no, it's true. I agree with you. you know, but the thing is a lot of people like to compare this to the Spanish flu First mm-hmm. off, that didn't, well, far as far as I know of, didn't come from a lab, number one. And when a virus mutates, it gets weaker. This damn thing's getting worse. It's getting stronger. And now they're saying if you're vaccinated, you can still get it and get sick. But then yeah. they're saying that it isn't so bad if you get it, if you're vaccinated. The truth is, it's one, stay off the media until you get your facts straight. Because yes. if your job was to confuse the hell out of people, yep. <laughs> missing a complex on that because oh. one side doesn't know what yes. they're doing. You nailed it on the head right there. Because, yep. I mean, depending on what news outlet you watch, you know, the numbers, it, it gets crazy. It's completely different on every yeah. channel. And, and you just, I just, show me the actual facts. Take your time. You know, mm. like, just, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like they a lot of times they're trying to protect us from ourselves or, you know, trying not to create panic. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, we can handle it. Just tell us (laughs) what's going on. (laughs) You ever notice anything stupid that people like to wing around about? If it's something important, they tell you for one hour and then they (laughs) bury it. I give you an example. Um, I don't know if you guys heard, couple of days ago there was a solar flare that slammed into the earth i didn't wow. hear that okay. no exactly it's something yeah. like that they just <laughs> completely buried but yeah. bill cosby having a fair and that seems to be <laughs> important or keep it up with the kardashians i would kind of like the spears one is the new one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, Free yeah. Britney. because that stuff sells better right yeah you know and it's it's hard yeah. You know, I, I was actually turned down. You know, I, a lot of people are like, oh, Keith, you should be on the news. You should be on the radio. You have a great story, great message. No, it's it, it's not going to sell. This is me and my dad watch the news. This is the 10 o'clock and five, uh, 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock news. Rape, murder, killings, and sports. Yeah. Go, uh, I don't know how you got to squeeze sports into that, uh, but it's kind of like, yeah. Really, you don't have any happy stories. You don't have anything uplifting. I don't know. You can't fix stupid, but I can numb it with a two by four. Yeah, uh, I, I completely agree. Yeah. So I'm going to do something special for you guys. What's the last seven minutes and counting? Was there anything you wanted to promote? Anything you want to talk about? Ask me. This is your time. Well, um, let's see. There's so many. <laughs> uh, there's a new film that's going to be starting production next week. It's called End of Youth. Um, mm-hmm. 
And let's see. Uh, the Advocate the will Advocate be filming started. in August. That's a big one. Um, that actually is our instructor from school brought us onto his project. So it's really exciting for us. We would have volunteered for that, for sure. Um, Mission Critical is just finishing post-production. Mm-hmm. And I'll be doing color on that here soon. And then we actually just wrapped on a site picture production's very first film that's all ours um, called Backbreaker. However, it is a small part of a bigger project. So it's not going to be released for a while. But yeah, so that was really exciting too. Yeah. How do you guys feel about doing like a documentary? Just throwing the idea out there about, about May. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'd be open to talking about that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Indy, I know you mentioned you have all these great projects. If you need me to promote it, I'd be more than happy to. Hey, Bri, actually, that's a network question I want to ask you. How do you find people? Do you cast people to be part of your films? Yeah, normally we go with a producer, John Hoffman, and mm-hmm. he kind of goes out and finds everybody for us, you know. Yep. Um, uh, out here, it's a, it's a very small film community, so we work a lot with the same people over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, but it's nice because you get familiar with people and more comfortable. And so you show up on set and realize somebody else is there and you're like, oh, yeah, we're working mm-hmm. here. you know, so it's I, I like it. It's it's nice. No, absolutely. Now, the other thing I want to ask you guys is for people with disabilities who want to follow into your footsteps, what would be your words of wisdom and how would they go about working with you guys? Hmm. I would say never give up. Don't ever mm-hmm. undersell yourself. Yeah. And to, to take any opportunity on set um, because you never know who on set is going to have the next film or mm-hmm. the next short or the next project. It could be the crafty guy. So make yeah. friends with everyone on set. And always give 110% because even if you don't think anybody's seeing you, they're seeing you. Yeah. We have a guy that uh, we work with regularly. We try and bring him on every project that we can that is a PA um, but wants to be a producer someday and he I mean he is has the best work ethic I have ever seen and he's got a law degree on top of (laughs) his film degree and we're just he's he's crazy he's he's we're very impressed with him yeah but I I, I don't think it should be uh, for an individual with disabilities any different Mm -hmm. you know like um I feel like they can work just as hard as anybody else can, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, the skills are there. The skills are there. I guess Mm -hmm. is the way I look at it. As long as you have drive and and passion and what you're trying to do, Mm -hmm. that's really what's going to set you apart from the people to your left and right. That's one thing with Ben, because he does have some injuries that do prevent him from doing some things um, that I've really admired about him is that he does not let anybody tell him no. Once he gets an idea in his Mm -hmm. head, or something he wants to learn or try, he, he's full for straight ahead, <laughs> you know, and there's no stopping him, even if he pays for it later. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, did, I agree with you 100%. You have to be 110% passionate determination. When someone tells me no, that's like, oh, right, I'm going to do it. <laughs> that's what people hate about me. I'm going to do it anyway. But I will prove you wrong. You know, what's this whole talk show about having a disability? You know, I'm not qualified. I'm not educated. I taught myself everything. And people say to me, you know, you did up to, uh, thanks to you guys, 869 episodes. Why aren't you have a big following? Why don't you have people following you? And actually, that's the question I want to ask you, you know, how social media does social media dictate if you guys get more viewers and how did you build an audience that's tough that is really tough so i've surrounded myself with a lot of um i guess people from the industry mm-hmm. and uh, i've friended and befriended i guess i should say a lot of, a lot of people from even worldwide i guess mm-hmm. and then after a short period of time i was getting the same number of friend requests all the time too and it does help uh, i think to an extent uh to get work but Mm -hmm. you're basically friend requesting or requesting your competition right yeah um i actually sent somebody a message because uh in one of the film groups i'm in 
they commented on something. I just really loved what they said. And it was about supporting each other. And so I wrote them this email about how I loved what they said. And I know they don't know me and I feel really stupid asking this, but would you please be my friend? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they sent me a friend request and so now we're friends. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, I mean, it's tough because I mean, I don't do what you do, right? I don't have, you know, that kind of a, like a following or a platform. Um, so that's, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, we have viewers. Um, yeah. that's, that's something different. Uh, so the way our producer normally does, he throws on YouTube and mm-hmm. kind of cross our fingers and hope for the best. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but we also yeah. watch the numbers with, with each film of, okay, at what point do we lose people or not lose people? And, uh, then our next film, we try and improve on that. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. You know, it's funny. I look at my most popular episodes. I interviewed a woman. I can't think of her name. So you going to kill me for us. And the <laughs> woman from um, Cobra Kai um, about 2014, maybe 15. Let's go with 14. 14 is good. And her episode got, I think, uh, trying to think without hurting myself, like 24K. And then uh, I also got celeb VM messages. You know, it's like, hey, can you endorse my message of, of Power Ranger? I think she was from Samurai or something. You know, her video got a couple thousand. And I'm like, why is it only certain videos that are hit and miss? Oh. Like, if right. you do a great interview, you know, I have interviewed professional wrestlers. And I'm kind of like, and it's a great episode. Yeah. But no one cares. But then you yeah. look at this one, it's like, okay, this one's when I was first starting out. And it's like, how did that happen? But um, right. You know, what's funny about that is right after we started really working a lot, our producer sent Ben a message and was like, you didn't tell me you're already YouTube famous. And he goes, oh. what? And it was because I don't know, like four or five years ago, he made a video on how to make these grass mat things for hunting. And he's got like thousands of views on it and he never even knew. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. Now I do have a couple questions for you guys off the air, but wrapping up, I'm going to ask you one hard hitting question. This usually I keep the videos 28 minutes, but for you, I make an inception. When I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your honest opinion? What made you say yes? And how do you feel now? What do you recommend it to other people? Um, so honestly, I was a little apprehensive at first, mostly because I don't like being on camera either. Um, but also because, um, I had a scary experience with Facebook. So I'm kind of cautious about who I talk to and who I accept friend requests from and stuff. But then what changed my mind was I actually saw your interview with Pete and I love Pete. And so I was like, oh, if he's good with him, then we're fine. (laughs) No, I get that a lot. You know, people are like, oh, well, what are you selling? It's like selling. I'm telling you, I have a freaking disability and I yeah. create my own talk show. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, that's great. Oh, what are you getting out of it? <laughs> All right. And it's kind of like eight. I have 860. I didn't pull it out of my ass or anything. 869 episodes. Thanks to you. Oh, okay. That sounds interesting. You sure you didn't just copy and paste it from something else and then try to pass it off as your work? And like, this is why people hate Facebook because you have stupid people who hide behind a screen and they don't have anything better to do with their lives than try to tear you down. Yep. Yep. We noticed straight away as soon as we won our first award for Runaway that there were a couple people that got a little shady (laughs) (laughs) it's true but i do have a couple questions for you guys off the air but wrapping up it was a real honor and privilege having both of you on the show i'm looking forward to june 10th of next i know it's a year ahead but june 10th of next year at eight o'clock is going to be my nine year anniversary show love to have you guys a part of it and if you're viewers make sure to like and subscribe to the key fancy network Make sure to support <laughs> my two guests. They are fantastic. They're, it's an honor and privilege. Not kissing your butts or anything. You guys <laughs> already got to create some fantastic work. Make sure to like and support them. As I always say to our listeners, until we meet again, 
Catch you later. <laughs>